Hello everyone, welcome back to the AWS Cloud Engineer Essential series. My name is Deera Chaudhary and in today's tutorial, we are going to take a deep dive into one of the most critical services for building scalable application on AWS Cloud, that is Elastic Load Balancer, also known as ELB. An Elastic Load Balancer automatically distributes traffic across multiple target, improves both the availability and fault tolerance of your application. It can scale automatically as your traffic grows and even perform health checks to ensure requests are only routed to healthy targets. So let's get started with ELB Deep Dive. So let's start by understanding what is Elastic Load Balancer. So an ELB is a service that automatically distributes incoming traffic across multiple targets such as EC2 instances, containers or IP addresses. The biggest advantage is that it improves application availability and fault tolerance. If one instance fails, traffic is automatically rerouted to the healthy ones. And uh, ELB also scales automatically as your traffic grows. It adjusts without you having to do anything. So that's the beauty of scalability with ELB. And finally, it continuously performs health checks on your target to make sure only healthy resources receive the traffic. So in simple terms, ELB acts as a traffic manager for your application, ensuring it's always available, reliable and scalable. So now let's look at the types of elastic load balancer that AWS provides. First is the application load balancers, also known as ALB. Uh, this works on layer seven of the OSI model. That is the application layer and it supports content based routing, meaning you can route traffic based on URL paths, host name, or even headers. This makes ALB ideal for model web applications and microservices. Next is network load balancer or NLB. This operates at layer four, the transport layer and NLBs are designed for ultra low latency and can handle millions of requests per seconds. And they are the best choice when performance and speed are critical. Finally, the gateway load balancer. This is used to deploy, scale and manage third party virtual appliances like firewalls or intrusion detection systems. So depending on your use case, like web apps, high performance workloads or security appliances, AWS provides the right type of load balancer for you. Now let's go through some of the key features of Elastic Load Balancer. First key feature is high availability. ELB automatically distributes traffic across multiple availability zones, which ensures your application stays online even if one zone fails. Next, security. ELB integrates directly with security groups and IAM policies, letting you tightly control who can access your load balancer. Next, it also supports SSL and TLS termination, which means the load balancer can handle encryption and decryption of the traffic, reducing the burden on your backend servers. With monitoring, ELB integrates seamlessly with CloudWatch, so you can track performance, latency, and the count of real-time requests which is coming in onto your uh, servers via load balancer. Another crucial feature is health checks. ELB continuously, continuously checks the health of your targets and route traffic only to those that are healthy. This is combined with smart routing, ensuring requests always land on available instances. Finally, ELB is highly configurable. You can define health check protocols, ports, paths, and the success codes. All of this contributes to fault tolerance, making ELB a critical part of resilient architectures on AWS Cloud. Now let's talk about health checks in Elastic Load Balancer. Health checks are how the load balancer constantly monitors your uh, targets. So you define the protocol port and path. For example, slash health is one of the path that you are going to define along with the expected success code. And it is going to monitor that. And if the target fails while it is performing the health check, elastic load balancer will automatically stop routing traffic to it. Once it becomes healthy again, ELB brings it back into rotation. This ensures traffic always goes to healthy instances, improving both fault tolerance and availability. And the pro tip is set up a simple lightweight endpoint that returns a quick 200. Okay. So your health check remains fast and reliable. I'm going to show you this in the demo today. 
Now let's have a look that how we can go ahead and create load balancers, configure uh, listeners and target groups. So let's do it step by step. So let me take you to the console first. Okay, now we are on the console. So from here, you have to go to the search panel and in the search panel, you have to type elastic load balancer. Once you type elastic load balancer, it will start. It will give you LB. So either it will give you like this. Otherwise, the best way is go to EC2 dashboard, EC2 and open your EC2 console. Once you open your EC2 console, you can go to load balancing and you have to click on load balancers over here. Before I go ahead and create a load balancer, just some background for you. I have created two web servers as part of the instances that is already available, web server one and web server two. So uh, both of these uh, web servers are in different availability zone to show you that how load balancer uh, actually takes care of the availability zone where if one availability zone goes down, how your traffic would be routed to the one which is available for you. And over here you can see uh, uh, this is availability zone 1B and another was is 1A. And the next thing of that is important is the security group over here I have added the HTTP inbound role. So when we are going to test if we are able to reach out to our web server, this will help us to resolve. Now coming back to load balancer, you have to click on create load balancer over here. It is going to show you the three load balancers that I discussed application network and gateway. It is also having a description for you to understand what exactly is each load balancer is for. We are going to create application load balancer over here. I will say ELB cloud engineering demo copy this. Now I am going to have an internet facing application, uh, internet facing ALB, not an uh, internal one. I am going to keep the load balancer IP address type as IPv4. Now for network mapping, I have taken the default VPC that I already have. And in availability zones and subnet selection, I am going to take availability zone one and two. The reason for that is I have the instances in one and two, A and B. That's why I have taken it. Now, uh, Coming to the security group, I will remove this and I am going to attach the security group that I showed over here, which is having HTTP uh, inbound rule available. Now over here, when we come down, now you have to create listeners. So we are going to talk to our web servers on port 80. Now to do that, first you will have to go ahead and create a target group for which you will just click over here and it is going to take you to target group creation. Over here, we are going to select instances because we are going to target our instances directly. Once you uh, select instances over here, you can give the name as target group cloud engineering demo. Okay. So I think it's saying a maximum of 32 alpha. So is it more? Uh, let's see if it's going to give error. Then for protocol, we are going to use the same port, uh, port 80 to connect and IP address type is going to be IPv4 and the VPC is default and the HTTP version we are going to take one and for health check, we have kept it slash. So it is automatically going to go on our web server where my Apache web server is already installed and it is going to do the health checks to see if it is able to uh, reach out to that server and that server is healthy or not. If you want to do advanced configuration, you can do it from here too by uh, changing the traffic port and all and you can also add tags over here. So I will go ahead and click on next. And once I click on next, you can see the two web servers that I have created is available over here. I will select them and I will include as pending below. So now once I do, it is showing two pending and I will create a target group. So once my target group is created, it will take around four to five minutes for you guys. Uh, so right now the health status is unused till the time the health status is not healthy because right now it is going to talk to the server to see if it is able to reach the web server. So uh, it is not going to connect via the load balancer and we have to keep on refreshing this to see if uh, it is able to uh, resolve uh, 
the health status. Meanwhile, what we can do is we can go back to our load balancer and I will refresh this and I will select our target group that I have created. This is our target group. Now, once target group is created, if you want to, so right now I have ju I am just listing on port 80, but if you want to listen on port uh, 443, you can type add listener. Once you add listener, you can, you know, change this to HTTPS and see it changes. So it's based on your requirement. So you can keep on adding the listener 80 or 443. And you can also add tags to your load balancer and you can also enable this option based on your requirement. And this is the final summary What where what we are doing is this is our name internet facing IPv4 and over here you can see I am taking the default VPC along with the 1A and 1B subnets where my EC2 instances are launched along with our uh, custom security group and the target group. And I will go ahead and click on create load balancer. So this will go ahead and create load balancer for me. So while it is creating the load balancer over here, you can see it is created successfully. Meanwhile, I will go ahead and refresh this. So it is still trying to connect. So meanwhile, I will talk about this console. So in this console, you can see all the details of our configuration as well as if you click on listeners and rule, this is the listener that we have configured. And if you go in network mapping, it is showing that it has been connected to two different subnets. And if you go to resource mapping, it is going to show you resource mapping where uh, we are going to uh, use listener, uh, which is going to use the target group. And this target group is associated to two targets, um, target one and target two. And when I hover on this, you can still see the target is still unhealthy. It will take some time uh, to uh, make the target as healthy. Uh, meanwhile, you can also see unhealthy target map. So over here, you can see there is no unhealthy target map from this end. So this listener is healthy. If you go to security, you will see that the security group has been attached. In terms of monitoring, if you enable the monitoring, uh, uh, you can see the basic monitoring over here. But if you want, you can also enable the monitoring and these are the further options, these, which are the advanced ones. Now, to see whether the load balancer is able to le uh, reach the server, you can just copy the DNS name from here and paste it in the web URL. If it is going to give the error, that means the health check is still going on. So the health check is still going on and I think we will have to wait for four to five minutes for it uh, to get that resolved. So guys, now in the target group, you can see our health status has become healthy. And if I refresh this, oh, this has automatically been updated. Now I will try to reload this to see, see, once it is routing traffic to web server one, once it is routing the uh, traffic to web server two. So it is routing the traffic between two different availability zones. Now I was talking about one case. If one availability zone goes down, what happens? So in that case, what we can do is I will bring down one server. I will go to console EC2 and I will stop on EC2. Let's see what happens. So it will again take four to five minutes for it to reflect because uh, health check takes time. Uh, but meanwhile, I will just go ahead and do um, actions, instance state, stop instance. I will stop the instance. Okay. Now the instance is stopping. So this will take some time to stop. Meanwhile, I will go to target groups and click on refresh. So you will have to wait for four to five minutes for it to reload. After that, you will see as it is unhealthy, it is not going to route traffic to that. It is only going to tra uh, route traffic to the healthy ones. So uh, once if one availability zone goes down automatically, uh, it is going to route the traffic to another one. And that is how you can understand how it distributes the traffic based on the instance being available or not. So guys, if I take you to our console once again, and if I keep on uploading, see, I am just keeping on uploading. Previously, it was sending from web server one to web server two. Now it is only sending to web server two. And that shows how uh, 
all tolerance is uh, been taken care by the elastic load balancer so let's see what's next for us so last but not the least we are going to finally talk about the best practices when you're going to use the elastic load balancer first best practice is choose the right type of load balancer for your application use an application load balancer for web applications that need content based routing and uh, use a network load balancer for ultra high performance or latency sensitive workloads second deploy your load balancer across multiple availability zones as we did this ensures high availability and fault tolerance if one goes zone goes down automatically it will route the traffic to the one which is already available that i showed you how it works third enable logging so elb access log is the special logs for elb it provides detailed information about every request which is coming in which helps with monitoring troubleshooting and compliance and fourth always secure your connections use ssl and tls certificates from aws certificate manager to encrypt your traffic and protect data in the transit by following these best practices you will get the best performance reliability and security out of your elastic load balancer deployment and that brings us to the end of this elastic load balancer deep dive where we have learned the different types of load balancers explored their key features like health checks ssl termination and monitoring and even walk through how to configure it in the aws console so thank you so much for watching my name is dheera choudhury and i hope this session helped you understand how to build scalable fault tolerant application with elb if you found this helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the next tutorial that is the upcoming tutorial in aws cloud engineer essential series so keep building and i will see you in the next video bye for now